Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Career Chat. I'm Krista Harmon from the Kent Intermediate School District, and I'm one of the Career Readiness Consultants, and I'm so glad to welcome Brian Bickford. Welcome, Brian. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to being part of this. Great. So everyone, Brian, um, Brian works at Grand Valley State University, and he is the Associate Director of Advertising and Writing. So we're going to dig into that a little bit. So Brian, you know, when you were back in high school, some of the ages of these young people, they're from all over Kent County. Did you think you'd grow up to be an associate director at a state university? Uh, no, I didn't. I, when I was in high school, or at least before I got to high school, I was pretty sure I was going to be a major league baseball player. So uh, I didn't have too many worries at that point uh, until I got to high school and realized I wasn't going to be a major league baseball player. But uh, I did find uh, that I that I had a knack for writing and enjoyed writing and decided if I couldn't be a couldn't be a baseball player, I'd at least uh, maybe I could be a, a reporter and, and write about uh, professional sports. So no, I didn't think I'd be an associate director of, of writing and advertising, but I thought I always thought I'd be in the communications field. That's great. So you were a natural writer in high school. Um, tell us about that. Did you do you know short stories yourself? Did you keep a journal? Like what? How did you your writing manifest itself at that age? Well, it's really interesting because I was I was extremely shy in high school, so I didn't uh, I, I you know I I didn't participate in a lot of clubs or get involved in a lot of things that way. But I did find a place in in the student newspaper, and and my teachers that I guess I had two of them over the the three years I was involved were ex especially nurturing and 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 positive and, and really helped me help me along and that's where I kind of found my people and my friends and uh, you know we we had a great I don't, I don't know if we had a good newspaper but we had a great time and we learned so much and and really that was the writing I was doing I was not an academic writer by any means you know I I've never been a very good academic writer uh, writing term papers and things has never been my thing I always like to uh, tell stories and you know uh, and whether that's through nonfiction journalistic typewriting or, or, or uh, you know, like you said, short stories and things, which I wrote a few of, uh, that, that's what uh, made me happiest and what I, where I really found a place of comfort. And telling stories is such a special gift. And I, I, I'm wondering if any of the students on the Zoom today, you know, are natural storytellers. So keep that in mind, you guys, as we move along. So you were working on this newspaper. Then did you have dreams of working for, like, uh, a sports illustrated like what were your dreams at that point then Since yeah you, you know sports? yeah I, I thought I would end up working in a, at a newspaper uh you know for a you know covering a professional sports team I thought I'd walk out of high school and uh go to college and then and then be hired right away in, into a journalism job or a sports editor job at a major newspaper somewhere in the country but uh that that had its way of uh not working itself out too so so tell us what your major was in college when you went off to write did you get a straight out writing degree or tell us your thought process and how you decided that yeah you know I I knew I wanted to do something in in something creative or something in writing so uh, I went to Grand Valley uh, which at that time uh, had a I think a journalism emphasis they didn't have, it was a, the degree was in arts and media but the the emphasis was in journalism so I did that and then while I was there uh, I also took a number of classes in marketing and public relations which were also uh, relatively creative and, and and kind of explored that side of it as opposed to writing news and interviewing people you know uh, doing a little bit more of the the trying to sell and, and, and that side of the, uh, of the creative process. So that's kind of where, when I left college, uh, I, I kind of was there, although I was still, I was still convinced I wanted to write for newspapers and magazines when I left college. So. So then did you start applying for those kind of jobs then? And you said that the, the universe kind of worked that out for you, that that's not where yeah. you went. So well, tell us, you know, cause I think yeah. it's important for kids to understand the angst, you know, like it doesn't always work out, but that you found a different path. So tell us about that. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't what I had dreamed of. Uh, I, I was fortunate. My 
senior year, maybe it was my junior year in, in college, I got, a, I got an internship uh, with Grand Rapids Magazine, uh, a regional city magazine they still publish today. It's, uh, you know, comes out monthly and has a lot of stories about the city and things in it. And that was great. The uh, editor that was my boss there uh, became a real mentor to me. He took me under his wing. He was a great guy. We stayed in touch for years and we still stay in touch. And this is a long time ago, uh, you know, 40 years ago. But, but uh, I, I did some writing for that and, and uh, it was great. Uh, and, but and at the same time, I, I was looking for other opportunities to write, especially sports. So I went to some of the, there used to be small news, weekly newspapers that uh, were delivered to your home for free. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to people who, who probably haven't seen a real newspaper in a long time, much less a free one that's delivered to your home every week. But, but, uh, and they covered local sports and local politics and things. So I did some writing for those. I, I covered a number of high school sports and things. You know, I think I got $10 an article or something, barely covered the $2 it cost me to get into the game, which they didn't pay for, or the uh, gas to get there. So, but it was good experience. And, uh, you know, that kind of set me on a different path, you know, the working every Friday night uh, at a football game or something, and, or you'd have to, I'd go to uh, city council meetings on Monday nights or a board, uh, school board meeting on another night. And, you know, suddenly the idea of working all these weird hours and not really being in control of your schedule didn't didn't appeal to me quite as much. So I really started then concentrating on on looking for something in in the marketing area where I you know I I, I felt more comfortable or, or I thought I I expected that I'd be more comfortable in a nine to five job. I, I love some of the things that you shared and I love that your experience that first of all, you took the initiative to get these little side gigs of those, um, you know, writing opportunities because you were a writer and you wanted to write and you pursued that. And I love that. So recommend all you young people to find those opportunities where you can write for a blog or write for a volunteer, you know, help some nonprofit with some writing to do that. But that that actual experience, you realize, man, the schedule is not working for me. And that's Part of what these are about, Brian, is for young people to hear these kind of things so they can start to self-assess like, oh, that wouldn't bother me or, oh, that, that's true. I think I do want a nine to five. So you, you get into, what was one of your first nine to fivers then after this experience? My first, well, surprisingly enough, my first nine to five was at a newspaper. It was at the Holland Sentinel newspaper, uh, but I wasn't a reporter per se. I I worked in the promotions office. We promoted the newspaper. So I was writing stories, you know, uh, we would have special sections. There might be a section about automobiles that the, that the uh, newspaper would publish once a year or something. And I would write stories about dealerships or something in the area that, that uh, had, you know, whether they were American, you know, here, we'll do a story on import, imported cars. And this, this dealership offers these type of things. And I'd talk to the dealer and we'd write a nice little feature about them or something. And, and that was fun. And that I would also, I was also in charge of helping promote the newspaper through advertising and things. So I got a little taste of the advertising side of it at, the, at that point. Uh, but that was my first nine to five. You know, on the other hand, that job also gave me a chance to do some music reporting. I was able to cover concerts and things, uh, which suddenly working Friday nights or a weekend night wasn't so bad if they were going to send me to concerts for free and I'd get a photography pass and be down in front and be able to take the photos. So that that side of it almost made me think this isn't so bad. But uh, uh, I did that for a year and then was able to get in. And, and another thing I'll tell you about journalism is it's really not a very high paying job. And I didn't move from that job to a to a very high paying job, but it, it, it was significantly more. I, I was able to get in at, uh, at Meyer in the Meyer Corporation at, uh, in their advertising department after a year at the Holland Sentinel. Well, I just love though, and I want the young people to really take note of this, that you went off to school, kind of that arts and media with a journalism kind of emphasis. You learned about marketing and public relations while you were there. And then those early jobs is where you kind of started getting some on the job experience around advertising and promotion. And I want young people to understand that 
that's how it works. You don't, you don't learn it all in college. You learn it on those early jobs. You start to fill your toolbox. So you start doing this advertising and you're at Meyer Corporate now. And obviously that's a company that needs lots of advertising. What was one of your favorite things about that job before we move on to even hearing about your current role? Uh, the people I worked with was was great. Uh, were great. I, I I met a lot of great professionals who I still keep in touch with, and you know their careers have moved up as mine has, and or moved on as mine has, and we've uh, stayed in touch, and it's been great to to see what they can do. And and you know I feel very fortunate to have worked for Meyer. I was able to uh, work with with Fred Meyer. Meyer is a interesting interesting corporation uh, especially back when i was there you know the corporate office and on walker and three miles where where our offices were and fred meyer at that time had to be in his late 70s but he would still come in every day and 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 there was you know even for the office workers there was a break time like twice a day you'd go to this cafeteria and take a break which is really unusual for for a white collar business to take breaks like that but Fred would be walking around saying hi to people and talking to them and that was awesome that was really neat uh, I really enjoyed that you know the work itself was not particularly creative in any way because I was writing advertising for for products you know there's only so much you can say about a pound of bananas you know 19 cents a pound <laughs> ripe and delicious you know uh but but uh it was it was great and I was young and I was learning and I was making connections and we also I started edging or moving into into the media area there so I was dealing with their advertising agency and was able to uh, you know kind of get my my toes wet in that side of the business too so that was that was uh, important and and fun. I, I love that the way you spelled that out. And I, I did want to just go back to the little bit of the perks when you talked about, you know, going to free concerts and stuff. I want young people to understand that a lot of industries have those kind of perks. So if you like sports, aim for the sports world because you can get maybe work for a company where you get free tickets. I worked at the Hilton Hotel for my early part of my career. I got to stay at other Hiltons for $20, you guys. So there's always some kind of perk. So let that be one of those things that helps you choose a direction if there's things that you really enjoy. Um, so you got to work at Meyer. And you're learning about advertising and, like you say, promotions and public relations, and it's just really all morphing and coming together in a different way. Um, what made you leave there to go? Was Grand Valley your next job? No, actually, after Meyer, I went to Old Kent Bank, which is now Fifth Third Bank, and I worked in marketing there. So I, again, another uh, Grand Rapids company that uh, well respected and and headquartered here. So uh, opportunity to to work with really good people. You know, we worked in the marketing department closely with the uh, senior management. So we would write annual reports and things. So I got a lot of good exposure and a lot of good experience working with, uh, with those people. And, and then when Fifth Third bought uh, Old Kent, uh, I was able to stay on for another year or two before they decided they didn't need a marketing department in West Michigan and in their home uh, office in Cincinnati. So uh, it, was, it was a great experience too. Again, another pro a different product, a completely different product than, than retail or, or news. Uh, so, yeah, and I think that's one of the things I would say, if you want to get into communications, just be ready to become an instant expert on, on all sorts of different things. And it's just paying attention and reading and learning from the people around you. Uh, you know, I, I still can barely balance a checkbook, but I, I can tell you an awful lot about banking. So uh, <laughs> it, I love that. I, I also love that young people can hear that it's not where you just make a decision and you're in that job for the rest of your life, that it continues to move. And even as you might get downsized out or, you know, they removed a department that you can still keep landing on your feet by these things that you've been accumulating and experiences and skills and also you're part of your network. So right. if a student, like they're thinking, man, I like the idea of marketing or, you know, public relations, let's go to Grand Valley now and let's talk about a little bit about your team and even the kind of roles that are around you. And then we'll dig into what yours is about. But I want them to understand even some of the different paths that your colleagues took to get to your office. Yeah, absolutely. Our office is, our, our department is institutional marketing. And there are, we're, we're, we have 25 people. That includes graphic designers. I think we have five graphic designers. 
three or four project managers who make things projects go through the through the system. Our web team is in there, and that includes web design and web uh, hosting and all sorts of web applications. You know, I think there's seven or eight people over there. We have four managers. I'm the 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 uh, writing and advertising. We have uh, project manager, manager, manager of project managers, uh, <laughs> and then our 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 vice president of the department. So, and we've all come from different backgrounds. You know, it's interesting. I'll I'll tell a real quick story. My current boss, uh, our, our associate vice president, she ended up working for the person who was my editor at Grand Rapids Magazine. Uh, and when he left there and opened a different writing business, uh, and she worked for him for a number of years. And then when she hired me and knew that I or found out that I had worked with with him and uh, knew him, she was able to call him, get a get a feel for what I could do and things. And and you know, those are the connections that was 25 years later, and uh, we still you know, and and it worked in, to my advantage. So again, the the importance of 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 finding those opportunities early on, internships and the volunteer opportunities, uh, that's really important. Yeah, I think that's a theme that I think the young people are starting to hear in this business series is that connections with people is so important. And to always you know, work hard and have a good attitude and be positive and keep those relationships. Because if you, if you are not a good worker, it's gonna, that's gonna be communicated out the line too. So it's just an encouragement to you young people just to you know, keep doing your best and those relationships will pay off down the road, just like Brian was saying. So again, nice variety. I wanted young people to hear just when we talk about being in business that there's so many jobs behind the scenes. Did most of them have marketing degrees that you know of or did they come from different environments? You know, our graphic designers all came, you know, they all have uh, have fine arts degrees. A number of them went to Kendall uh, College of Art and Design. A couple of them went to Grand Valley for for art and design, for graphic design. Uh, our web team, they come from all sorts of, you know, very few uh, marketing people in that group. Uh, but me, the other managers, yes, we all have marketing backgrounds. Great. And for young people who might be wondering, you know, what do you do all day? So give us a sample day of what it means sure. to be a manager and maybe what even institutional marketing means. Yeah, well, again, inst uh, yeah, institutional marketing. And then there's, we have a sister department, which is university communications. They take care of all the public relations and news stories. So we don't do any of that. Our job is to create awareness of the university for our many clients. You know, those are internal clients for our admissions office. I, you know, on any given, right now, I'm working on a, uh, a brochure that talks about academic excellence at Grand Valley. Uh, I'm writing that, uh, and talk, and we'll, that'll be given to students who come to campus for tours or something, and their parents, and help them understand how you know the quality of education that you'll get at Grand Valley. Uh, we are working on uh, some other program. I'm also working on some letters right now to uh, people who have started college at Grand Valley and left, and trying to get them to come back and see if there we have a new degree that's perfect for for people who have you know a certain amount of credits uh, and haven't been in college for a while help them get this job and move on to the next level if they want to move their career forward so I'm writing letters and and a postcard for that uh, we're launching a couple big uh, big initiatives for the president's office uh, one one of them is going to be launched later this afternoon a national initiative. And we did, we've been doing a lot of work on the website for that. So I've been writing on that and editing and proofreading. Uh, so it's really all over the place. I'm doing all sorts of different things every day, different clients, you know, I'll be working with uh, theater and dance department one day on advertising or, or their brochure or something. And the next week I'm working with uh, the School of Public Nonprofit Health Administration or or the College of Nursing. I have a meeting tomorrow morning with them to help them launch a new degree and, and get the word out there about that. So our job is to really uh, serve the clients of the university so that they can can attract students to the university. And we've we've done all right. So yeah, that's fantastic. And what a variety. You must really like that about your job. 
that's one of the best things about the job is there is no typical day and I get to meet so many people and 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 everybody from the president to to the person in the bookstore you know we're working with them I also manage our logo so uh, make sure that's used right so I'm doing a lot of uh, of approvals and uh, trademark uh, things with that work with attorneys on that so that that's all fun and it's all so interesting and, and different and again it I think my background of journalism being able to become an instant expert in a lot of different things has, has helped me there. Um, just so you know, students know I'm actually a graduate of Grand Valley so I'm a, a Laker and I said to Brian and before we got started today that I'm a Laker for a lifetime that's a tagline that um, they had used in other billboards and materials and who who invented that Brian? Well, I, I, you know, I, I would say that I'm the person who wrote that down on, in an ideas yeah. list. Uh, maybe somebody else did too, but I'm, I'm taking the credit for that. Yeah. So those are the kind of things that we get, that we get to do. You know, we get to brainstorm ideas uh, for programs like that. The advertising, if you've seen the billboards that are out there right now, uh, I, I can't even, I don't remember exactly what they all say, but they feature local students and, uh, you know, something to the effect of, you know, build your career or something. But that, uh, the the Laker, Laker effect is something our office came up with and, and has, has evolved. So if you hear the Laker effect, so anything that you hear from Grand Valley, you know, we work on, we've been doing some work with the veterans uh, uh, office, trying to help them uh, get some, the word out on some programs they have. They have a great new program that, uh, you know, if you, if you're going to go into the military, you're, you, you can be automatic, you can be accepted uh, up to two years in advance or so to, to be accepted to Grand Valley. And when you come out of the military, you'll have a spot waiting for you. So we're getting word out on that. We've got other programs where, you know, we've just introduced one for low income people or low income students where they can go for tuition free. So it's just getting the word out and helping people understand how, how we can help serve them. So it, it's really interesting and always different and always uh, very fulfilling. And, and you know, I, I get a great joy of helping, of knowing that education truly helps people and, and not that banking didn't or, uh, you know, knowing how much bananas were a pound didn't, but this is really fulfilling and, and I, I'm glad I've uh, been able to get to Grand Valley at this point in my career. And that's great. I just want to point out, you know, for those of you that are thinking somewhere in business that every business has this type of role. So it can be, like I said, a focus on sports. It could be a focus in a music organization. So again, think about your own interests. Um, you know, I was wondering, you know, do you have a favorite project when you think about it? Favorite project, uh, you know, I, I love the Laker effect. I think we we did really nice job with the Laker effect. So it's been uh, it's been fun to be part of that. It's fun to see something like that. You know, when the billboard goes up or an ad goes out, and to see people respond to it. Or I have a son who's in high school, and he's starting to get. I have three sons in high school, and they're starting to get mailings. And and it's fun when they get mailings that uh, I've written, and and uh, I don't even think they realize that that's. You know, they're reading about Grand Valley. I don't think they realize I wrote it or or a letter from something that I that I've edited. And then, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love the Laker effect and that that feels good. Uh, it's one of my all time favorites. Yeah, it is a good one. As an alumni, I'll, I'll second that. Um, one of the things that schools talk about with students are soft skills. So they talk about teamwork and, you know, communication and critical thinking. So um, one of our students wants to know, like, how do you deal with others when, is it, is it difficult? Cause you're brainstorming, you have your ideas, other people have their big ideas. How do you negotiate that? How does that work when everybody's got great ideas? That can be difficult. Uh, you know, you have to be, have a, you, you, it can't be about you. Uh, that's for sure. I've worked with people who, who are not very flexible when it comes to, to changing their ideas. I think I'm, I'm pretty, pretty adaptable. Uh, I think that's, that's the key word is being adaptable. You know, it still has to get the job done. And if, if that person or that idea, if they can tell you how that's going to still accomplish your goal, that's the most important thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm not the smartest person in the room generally. So uh, 
I, I'm more than willing to listen to other people. And, and even when I am the smartest person in the room, I don't think uh, that, that, my, that my thoughts are, are the most important. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to, to argue my point and fight for my uh, ideas, but uh, I'm, I'm also willing to, to uh, give in a little and, and, and compromise uh, for the good of the university or the project. Well, I think flexibility is one that employers ask for. So that's great to hear that. That's really important. And that you have to kind of check your ego at the door that it is about what's best for the university or your client or whatever you're doing. But that's great for students to hear that real life ex example. Um, when they are dealing in high school, they have to do projects with each other, right? And that's part of why your teachers have you guys doing that at this level is to start to practice those skills of advocating for your idea, but then learning to step back. So thank you for painting that picture for us. Um, would you do anything different if you were to do it all over again, Brian? I don't think so. You know, I wish I would have started off uh, making more money, but uh, it, you know, no, I, I, I don't think I would do anything differently. Uh, I, I might be a little more assertive. You know, again, I was very shy as a, as a high schooler and uh, probably didn't advocate for myself the way I should have or, or believe in myself maybe is a better word. Uh, so I, I think, having more confidence right out of the box would have would have been helpful but you know i i progressed and i can look back and say okay i spent a year at the holland sentinel then i went to meyer and i spent seven years there but then i got to the bank and i spent 10 years there and i loved it there i would have spent the rest of my life there but uh you know and then i was able to get to grand valley and 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 I think I'm glad I didn't get to Grand Valley first, uh, you know, because I, I think it would have been a different experience. And and we have a number of people in our office who've come right out of school into our office and there's just nowhere to grow for them sometimes. So uh, I was lucky to take jobs, lucky, I guess, that that uh, always left me somewhere to go above them uh, uh, in my early, early career. And, and I think I was able to uh, make that work for me. Uh, that's a great point for sure and I have to I just tell the students um, as I pull up a screen to share a resource with them Brian I think the timing's perfect Brian um, said he's been at Grand Valley 17 years and what's so great um, is he has those high school sons and when you work at Grand Valley full-time you get half off tuition for your kids so it sounds like that perk is coming right at the right time there Brian it, it really is <laughs> I'm very very appreciative of it so I'd like to point out, as you think about a final word of wisdom, Brian, um, I wanted to give students um, the onetonline.org. Um, if this is your first career chat, this is a great resource to go in and do some really great career research. You would just put um, the title right in that search bar and read all about different careers. But I wanted to kind of bring up the idea of associations today. There's something called the American Marketing Association. And Brian, are you part of that? I'm not, but a uh, number of people in our office are. And I, I've actually been to an AMA uh, conference, but I, I'm just not a member. Yeah, I just want to point this out for young people. When you start to seek out these kind of associations of an area of interest, these websites have so much to offer. They have different training options, conferences. They usually have student rates, different certifications you can get that might be a great credential for your resume as you're building your career. Some really great publications that you probably really enjoy reading the article. Um, one today is being featured, what's the difference between marketing and advertising? If this is an area of interest, find a website um, of the association of that field because you can really glean some really great information. So I wanted to point that out. Um, Brian had originally offered, I hope this is okay, Brian, uh, that it was okay to share your um, email if anyone had any follow-up questions. Um, do you guys offer job shadows ever for high school students if that was yeah, open up after we pandemic? Do. We do. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, I haven't, haven't, I haven't been working in the office since last uh, March. So we're, I expect we'll go back relatively soon here. But yeah, we do. Uh, I, I've hosted a number of students uh, from time to time over the years, you know, come in and follow us around for a day or sit and talk to me about what we do and, and how they can get into the business. And that's what we do. We're in education. We want to help. So. Yep. That's all great. And I hope students you'll, you'll put in that into your memory. So as things open up that you'll take the initiative to contact Brian is now part of your network. You will want to may even mention, Hey, I, you know, I met you at the career chat, you know, to give him some context, but you know, sounds like they're willing to let you in to do a job shadow. So that's great. It's four o'clock 
goes fast, Brian, I tell you. What would you it like does. to say to these young people as they as we finish up and send them on their way? You know, my, my biggest advice would be to get involved, whether that's an internship or volunteer, then in find mentors and find connections. That's what's been the key to me throughout my whole career. Uh, whatever I've done, uh, it's, be, it's because I've known somebody and made connections and, uh, it, it, and be kind, just, just be good. And people, people love good people. So if you're good, you'll, you'll, you'll find your way. And I think that's the, the best thing, best advice I can, I can give. That's, that's gold. That's gold information for sure. I'm going to, Stop recording real quick and then um, we'll finish up here. Bye, everybody.